Okay, howdy, Hades Mega here. Um, so today uh, I will be. Uh, this is the next part of the uh, Suron uh, tapered roller bearing upgrade video. Um, so in this uh, section of the video, we're going to go take the uh, take the Suron might be a front end apart. Um, if I had a dollar for every time I took a front end apart on this bike, I'd have like five dollars now. So <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I don't know why I have to work on the front end so much on this bike. But anyway, um, so here we go. So the first step is uh, you're going to want to put it on some kind of stand. Uh, I'm using a Harbor Freight uh, ATV slash motorcycle jack. Um, it works okay. Um, I think it would be better if you had a uh, like a, a motocross stand, like just one of those um, really strong stool type thingies uh, would probably work. But uh, this does okay. Um, you might be able to use. Um, you might be able to use a rear stand. Yeah, if you have like a rear motorcycle stand, like the one right here, if you got one of those, like a, uh, that's actually a front stand. The front stand actually works on the rear of the Suron, so uh, the Light V, and uh, you can actually use one of those and maybe like a like a jack, a car jack or something underneath the where like the skid plate is, and, and um, so just find a way to get your bike up in the air like this, so, so you we can because the it requires uh, disassembling the fork is the problem. So, <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is the uh, yeah, first thing you gotta do is put it up on the jack, um, or put it on some kind of stand. So so that at least the front wheel is off the ground. Um, the rear wheel doesn't really have to be off the ground, but um, uh, I also wanted to point out that uh, the on uh, the so uh, on the Lunacycle website they claim that you can do this in 30 minutes. So we'll we'll see. I'll give you my realistic opinion, but. Uh, of course, I'm shooting video at the same time, so it always takes longer. Uh, the, so the next step is to uh, to remove the front wheel. So to do that, it's pretty easy. You need an eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench. Um, I'm going to use this. Uh, what you're going to want to do is turn it clockwise. So the, on the on the right side of the bike. Um, uh, there is a uh, there's a plug nut like it's kind of like a it's, it's like a plug that screws into the axle, and it's a reverse thread. So it's, instead of righty tighty, it's lefty tighty, and you know it's it's righty loosey now. So <laughs> so so you want to turn it clockwise to get it loose. If you turn it counterclockwise, you'll probably just break the axle. side okay so this one is actually the correct direction so it says here uh, axle release counterclockwise so you want to, you're going to want to turn this counterclockwise this axle looks kind of kind of beat up on the bike it'll probably be easier if you use a wrench but I'm using a T-handle I think the torque is like 40 foot pounds or something so it's, it's not a lot so once you got it loose, um, you're going to want to hold the wheel up and pull the axle up. It should slide right out and then just pull pull the wheel forward and down, just like that. Come right up. There you go. So there we go. Front wheel's off. Uh, make sure you don't lose these spacers. Make sure they stay on there or you put them someplace safe. If they do come off, they may fall off uh, if the little O-rings aren't on. Uh, this should be it should be the same for the dirt wheels too. These are the super level wheels. Okay, so the next step is to, to remove the front uh, brake caliper. Um, I uh, okay, so so I, I don't want to lose the uh, the alignment for the caliper, so I'm gonna go mark the like where they mount. So. It's, it's no big deal. You can just realign it anyways. It's pretty easy to realign the brakes, but I just want to, just, just in case. 
Um, and I'm using a gold marker to do it. You kind of can't use a black one because it's black already. So. All right, so then go get a five millimeter uh, Allen wrench of some sort and go ahead and remove the, uh, the caliper. You can't actually take, yeah, you can't actually take the mount off of the, the forks because the, the caliper is blocking it. So just just take the, the barb with the adjuster. Off. Alright, so caliper's out. Um, so what I'm going to do is so I don't lose the, the bolts, I'm just going to put them back right where I found them. That way I don't lose the bolts. So I'm just going to kind of let this hang and also take note take note of where the line is running through. So like here I kind of got it. It kind of goes through like where the headlight is and it goes... So these are the close-ups of the marks I made on the, uh, the bracket. So there's like two here, and then there's two on this one right here. So that way you kind of know how to put it back on. Okay, so I want to take my number plate off so it doesn't get in the way. Um, your bike might not have it. Okay, I'm hoping that we can take the forks off now. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, I got there's a bunch of wires trapped behind the headlight. I may have to take the headlight out. I'm not 100% on that. But I will attempt to take it out now. All right, so we're at that point where we can start working on the forks. Okay, so so really, so I'm going to tell you now from uh, having adjust, readjusted the headset myself in a previous video, um, this top clamp is the one that actually holds the whole sandwich together. So um, taking, taking the handlebar off uh, will not make the forks fall off so you don't have to worry about that quite yet so um, what we're, we're going to do right now is we're going to take the handlebar off um, and how I'm going to do that is we're just going to take the whole stem out um, all right, so. okay I've had to brighten up the camera a whole lot so you can see but um, so what you're going to want to do uh, so, we're, so what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the stem the, um, the handlebar stem from the actual the fork stem right here the center part um, there's a big long tube going through the whole dealer right here, so um, we're probably gonna not reuse this. I, they gave us a special one, I think. So anyway, uh, it's a five millimeter. So I'll go ahead and remove that, and that really doesn't do anything, but it just covers the top. Like I said, the uh, this clamp here, the upper clamp right here, is the one that's really holding everything together. Hold the upper and the lower, sort of. If you think about it. Okay, so the reason I took the, the cover off first is um, so you can you can set some alignment marks. Um, so the way I had this set up before is um, uh, when I first installed this this uh, handlebar stem riser, um, I made marks here, like where the cutout is, and here in the center um, is where you know where this cutout would be. Um, I would line it up with the mark I made there. See, there's a black mark. Um, and I made one on like the 12 o'clock position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a, I'm, I can't really do anything about the bottom one, but the bottom one is kind of your, your guide right there. I'm going to go ahead and get that, that gold marker that I had. I mean, you can just realign it after two, but this, this, this is just so you can put it back together the way you found it. I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at the 12 o'clock position. Okay. So that way we kind of know how, where to, to line it up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the stem clamp here. It's a five millimeter. Uh, mine is a five millimeter. I don't know which one yours will be. This is an aftermarket one, so sometimes they have different sizes. And then this half, the stem should just come right off. Um, and I think the best place to put it would be on the head, like that. All right. So I just let it rest right here where like kind of the key is, and that's where we're at. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, if you have, uh, uh, I think if you have a stock one, there will be like a little spacer ring here. Mine doesn't have it, 
so uh, um, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, the, my my clamp is like thick enough for the whole thing and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, you, there will be a ring here. Just take that off and then put it someplace safe. Oh, okay, so I'm kind of looking at everything, and it looks like it's being a real pain in the ass to. Uh, <laughs> um, it's the problem with the compared to like a bicycle. If you were to do this on a bicycle. Um, you got all these wires here, so you gotta take it apart. It's still not as bad as like a motorcycle, but <laughs> um, you got a lot of wires here, so these are gonna get in the way. So you gotta be really careful you don't pull these too much and rip them or something, you know? Um, so I'm just gonna be real careful. Um, I got a, okay, so I got a box and a bucket just in case, uh, just to prop up the stuff. But the caliper, you don't really have to prop it up. Um, but uh, just make sure nothing gets hung up. You rip in. Okay, out. so we're gonna start lowering the fork here in a bit. Uh, so we're just gonna be real careful. We got the handlebar back there. Um, I think that's the best place to keep it, unless you can find some way to prop it up somehow. But, um, all right, so so what we can do to lower the uh, the forks out from the head is um, is loosen these two bolts. Uh, yeah, these two bolts right here. They're five millimeters. Probably going to want to hang on to it as you do that because it, it will probably fall. I guess this is probably a good time for me to readjust the height of my forks too if I wanted to. So mines are a little bit lower. So. I got a little box underneath to catch it just in case it falls. It won't fall too bad and it's made out of plastic. So what I'm going to want to do is just... Okay, so there's one more bolt hiding back here that you're going to want to loosen. So there's three. There's one in the back and two in the front right here. So one right here and then two right here. So just make sure go ahead and hold on to the fork. Is it me? So yeah, the whole top clamp assembly has got to come out for it to actually come be able to remove the fork, at least I think it Okay. There we go. It's really loose now. You're going to have to slide the forks out of the top clamp. I think. So just make sure it's holding something because it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. There we go. And then you can go ahead and take that top clamp out. So it'll make it easier to work with. Just remember which way it goes. Um, just remember it goes this way. Okay, so. Uh, so I got some gloves on because I know it's going to get a little greasy here. Just try to get these wires out of the way as best as you can so you get some space to work on. And uh, so right now the box is holding it up right now. It's keeping it from falling all the way out. So we can kind of do some work here while, while it's in this position. So there's a spacer right here. Make sure you don't lose that and make sure you remember where it was. There's a plastic kind of cover right here. This looks exactly like the one that comes in the new kit. So you're probably going to wind up replacing it. And then you got some kind of washer dealy here. Okay, and then you got this little, I don't know what this is, this, but this looks very similar to, uh, it looks very similar to the one that's in the, uh, um, the new kit. It comes with a piece just like this, so I guess we're going to replace that too. Okay, so from, from there, we can probably try to take the whole thing. All right, thing so from the way. top, that's what we've removed so far. Um, it goes from left to right. This is on the top, and this is all the way on the bottom. Um, there's this spacer, there's this uh, cover, plastic cover, and then there's this kind of washer type thing, and then this little C washer thing. Yeah. So your bike might not have a fancy headlight like mine, but okay. So I'm going to go remove the headlight. So um, you, you may not have to do that on your Suron.
Okay, let's try this again. I've try I've uh I've gone ahead and uh, removed the headlight. Hopefully this will work now. some freaking turn signals on this also. Mm. Okay, that's fine. I'll uh, just... What I'm going to do is I'm going to lean the forks on the bike. And then I'll rip these turn signal indicators out. We're going to be working with this here and, and the stem. Okay, so the first thing uh, we got to do next is uh, we've got to uh, remove the upper part of the uh, the headset bearing, um, I think. Um, you could probably start on the bottom too, but um, I found out that this tool, this tool here, is for driving in the uh, the bearings. It's not for uh, it's not for uninstalling it, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, we still can't use it yet. Um, so we got to get the old bearing out. So okay. So what I'm going to use for that is um, this T-handle socket here and a rubber mallet or hammer of some sort. Um, this may damage it, so you're gonna want to tap it. You're gonna you're gonna want to move the uh, um, whatever you're gonna use to drive it out, like whatever punch you're gonna use. So I'm gonna use this T-handle right here. You're gonna put it underneath from underneath, and you're gonna hit it. And then it probably helps to hit it like on different areas too comes out evenly. Yep. Yep. So you can see it's coming it's starting to come out a little bit. So here's a view on from the top from what what's going on here, and it's pretty much the same thing. They're going to be the other for the bottom one. It's just you're just hitting it a different direction. Um, so you can see it here. This is the uh, your driver right here, and you're just going to hold. You're going to put it against the lip here, and then just hit it. There we go. It's out. Uh, I didn't have to use too much force to get it out. Um, but yeah, there it is. It's the bearing right there. It's an interesting bearing. I don't see how this would break so easily. It's, it's pretty, pretty strong. Anyway. <laughs> okay, that's the upper that's the upper bearing right there. Okay, so I'm looking at the bottom here. So what you're going to want to do is, um, is you're going to want to get your punch and get it all the way in there. Something's like loose in there too. It's like it's not right. But anyway, get this there and then like just hit it on the edge just similar to the top one but you're going down this time all right okay let me just zoom in so you can see what's going on here Alright, so just take note that that's uh, that may go flying once you uh, once you take it out. Um, make sure you got something to catch it, like a like a towel or something. So here's what came out underneath it. Uh, there's a piece of plastic here. I think that I don't think that's supposed to look like that. Oh, I think the other piece of plastic is on the fork itself. So. So this, I don't know if there's anything else in there, let's see. Okay, so this was in there like this. And we were just hitting it around the edges here. Um, I'm not going to lie, this this one was a lot more effort to take out than the one on top. So, But it wasn't too bad. I think there is an actual tool to uh, to remove this, but I, I don't have it. I just use the old punch method. Okay. 
So just set that aside. Okay, there's a few more parts left over. Um, so you're going to want to take the actual bearing with its cage out with the fork right here. Okay, that's what that looks like. There is a plastic, okay, here's the rest of that plastic thingy that, that got stuck in there. I think it got like pinched or something and it eventually broke itself. And, uh, and then there's a plastic cover right here. Sure, but I, I'm not sure if that's got to come out. Is that the same one as the one that's in the kit? Okay, so we've got to take out that the um, the part that presses on the bearing um, because that one is tapered and this one is flat. So I think this is the one that we're. Okay, so I'm not 100% on how to uh, how to remove this. I don't have a like a, a puller claw tool that does this. So um, so I'm just gonna. I'm pretty sure I'm breaking. I'm destroying it too. So we probably won't be able to use it anymore. <laughs> Um, so this is what I've been doing. And I got this. This is a like it's like like a plastic. Uh, it's a plastic trim remover tool, and it has like a it has like a wedge on it. There's a wedge so you can wedge stuff out, and it's plastic so it won't damage it too much. Um, and I basically I there's one with like a kind of forked front, so I've been driving it in there to get it up a little bit, and uh, and I was able to get it in there. I used the I used the hammer to get it so. Uh, I'm just going to kind of speed this up and I'll let you know how it turns out. Okay, I got it out. Um, so, so what I had to do was I had to get this fork part just to just to lift it up a little bit. It's actually it's tapered, is what it is. So, um, if you can get it, if you can get it past the bottom part, it'll it'll come off really easy. So, uh, uh, but anyway, I, I wedged it in with the with this trim remover tool. I hit it this way, and then when it got when it lifted up a little bit, I flipped it over and I used this one that it's got kind of like more more meat to it, and I drove. I drove it in a little more. It kind of messed my tool up a little bit too, but that's okay. It's really cheap. Um, and then, uh, and I couldn't get it to move anymore, so so I had to bust out a pry bar. So after that, I used the pry bar. I think it might still be good, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to reuse it. And that's like a that's a race. That's actually something that needs to be in room thing. Um, that was actually not that hard because on that bike, <laughs> the DR650, I had hell of a time getting the bottom right. Um, the bottom part out, the bottom race out. Um, yeah, it was so difficult to get it out on that one. I had to use an air hammer to get it out. <laughs> so um, I didn't have to use an air hammer this time. So this is good. So anyway, um, so if you look at it, if you look at the base, it's a little thicker. It's a little thicker than the rest of the stem. So, um, and that's why it's so hard to get out. Uh, but then once you get it past that bottom part, it, uh, it comes right out. So there it is. Take that all the way out. Try not to mess up your fork while in the process. So there it is. Yeah, try, as much as possible, try not to scratch your forks. Especially don't scratch anything don't here. Don't scratch anything here, for sure, man. This is this is the part that goes into the fork. Um, but yeah, try to keep it, try not to scratch it up too bad. Um, that's why I, try, I tried my best. Uh, all right, so there it is. Everything is uninstalled. Um, let's go take a look at the components real quick. Okay, he's right here. This is the last part of the uninstall video, uh, part of the uninstall installation video. Um, so I'm just gonna go over the parts that we took out. Um, so th this is like pretty much how I took everything out. Um, there was this part right here. This is on the very top, 
and that goes on top of this and then this was on the stem and then this was on there and then you got your bearing that was uh, pressed in there I think I'm not sure I think the bearing actually comes out of this but it's kind of stuck in there and it's like it's a roller ball it's a ball bearing type deal it's a ball bearing plus cage and so I think this goes in there like that I think it's supposed to be some kind of a it's supposed to be like a seal or some sort this goes on top of that I'll get my hands dirty and then there's this guy's, there's this cover here and then there's this okay, so this is a whole top uh, oh this is a whole top unit right here it's the way it works right there you see the bearing in there so that goes like that okay and then the the bottom unit this is at the very bottom right here this is the part that was hardest to take out and then you got this plastic cover thing that's all messed up and then you've got the actual race the upper race so this is the lower race and this is the upper race and they go like that and then the bearing goes in between them just like that See, I scratch it up quite a bit. I think it might still be good. It actually doesn't. Yeah, that actually doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, that actually does nothing. <laughs> it just kind of, it's kind of just there to press on the bearing, is what it does. Um, the actual rolling parts is the upper race and the the ball bearings with the cage. And then this part just it just presses on the on the cage basically. It's pressure on the bearing set. It's a little gritty, yeah, a little bit gritty. It's not, but it's okay. I think it's still in okay shape. Um, yeah. So. All right. Hey, so All right. So this, uh, so that's the first part of the video. The first part of the video was just to uh, to disassemble the bike, and to, to disassemble the bike, it took literally almost an hour. It took me an hour with the videotaping. Maybe I could have done it in half an hour. Um, the I don't know the 30 minutes to install the bearing. It, it, I don't think <laughs> like maybe if you were really proficient at it, yeah, you should probably do it in 30 minutes. But you have to be, you'd be like boom, boom, boom. You know, um, I'm kind of learning as I'm going along. Um, they didn't have any steps on how to disassemble anything out of the Luna Cycle, um, the the Suron video. The Suron video was like it was very. They were trying to show you the concept of installing it, but they didn't really do it. You know, <laughs> um, they had like a freaking empty frame that they put the stuff in there. So, um, all right. So the next. The next video, we will actually go install the uh, the new headset, um, the tapered the tapered roller bearing headset, uh, and, um, and yeah, so it should be should be fun. But, uh, that's where I'm gonna stop today. I think I, I gotta get to work, and uh, so just make sure your stuff is secure. You know, doesn't fall out. Make sure your forks don't fall down. Um, it, if you have a regular, a stock Suron, you know, that doesn't have so many gidgets and gasmos like uh, like my bike, it should be a little easier to do. I can't really take my fork out from the bike because the turn signals are attached to it. I could disconnect them, I guess, or cut them off or whatever, but I don't want to do that. So I kind of have to just, I have to work in this kind of confined space here. So, um, so the next episode we'll kind of clean up a little bit and then we'll go, we'll install the bearings um, and we'll grease the bearings and then reinstall everything. Hopefully that'll probably take another hour. Okay, yeah, so it took me like an hour to get everything done. So, all right, so that's it for this video. <laughs> Let's make out. Good luck. Hope that helps out some people.